These days, if you are like most people, you will make and find sounds using just normal VSTs or maybe analog synths if you've got that swag. But today I wanna to show you guys something that I think is underrated called resampling, where you will make sounds that would be extremely difficult to recreate using conventional methods starting from scratch. So instead of endlessly scrolling through presets or building your sounds from scratch, which might take quite a bit longer, and there's nothing wrong with that because I actually enjoy building sounds from scratch, I'm gonna show you a whole new world that hopefully elevates your level of production or maybe even just inspires you to make some new beats. Let's tap into the world of resampling. Resampling is just a technique where you take an original sort of source sound and you change different aspects of it and then you re-record it as a brand new sound, which is simple enough. So instead of starting with like a sine wave and crafting a sound, if you start with a real sound that has a similar character to the type of sound that you're trying to craft, you can kind of save yourself a whole bunch of time and get something unique in the process. So for example, instead of scrolling through the bell presets on your favorite synth, another thing that you can do is just find something around your place that has sort of bell-like characteristics, and it could be anything. Sound design is awesome that way because you can kind of transform things as you see fit. So right now, I've got this bottle of olive oil and a tiny little spoon, and if I just like record in this sound here, that's gonna be our source material for our bell sound. It's like we've already got 70% of the sound done. So if I lower this by a couple of octaves here, so here's the beauty of resampling. Now I'm gonna start adding some effects and making it sound a little bit closer to what I had in mind for my main bell sound and my beat, for example. So I'm just gonna add some compression here, shape it with a bit of EQ, take some of the lows out, add some highs. And then I'm using this thing called spectral blur. And this is, you know, these effects, you can really just get creative on your own. This is just what I decided to do. So I'm using this spectral blur. And this adds kind of a spacey quality to it. And then I am adding some harmonics with some saturation. And then just making the sound mono. Now to complete the sort of resampling cycle that I'm talking about, all I would really need to do is open up a new track. If you're in Ableton, you can just set the input to be resampling and you can record in your new sound by arming that track and recording. And there's our new sound. Oliver Oil is what I wrote. Well, I guess we know the name of the instrument then. It's gonna be called Oliver Oil. Now what you do is just create an empty MIDI track and then drag this audio into the empty MIDI track to make a new sampler with that sound. And the reason we make it a sampler is so we can make it into an instrument from just a single source, right? One thing I like to do when I'm making an instrument out of a single sound is to play around with this these warp modes to make it either sound more realistic or pitch it how you would expect things to be pitched where lower notes are longer and higher notes are shorter. So if I turn on warp and turn it to complex mode, everything's gonna be the same length. And you can hear at the end too, it kinda has like the, a little bit of a tremolo thing happening. Or maybe it's even vibrato, it sounds really cool and that's from, I think, the spectral blur. Sounds pretty cool, right? Now if you take this off and you go to a higher register, it's got a realistic quality to it because, well, it was recorded from a real sound where the higher frequencies decay at a faster rate than the lower frequencies do. And sometimes with synth presets, that doesn't happen, which is a little bit more creative, but it's also less realistic. It's not something that you would find in real life. And you might want that. So that's all well and good for a real sounding bell, but you can actually take this resampling process and get even more creative with it. So if I took this sampler that we made just from this audio clip and the original bell sound, and I start adding different effects to it and just having fun with it, and this is actually a good opportunity to use plugins that you don't use all the time. I just made a little filter envelope with a bandpass filter here, so it kind of sounds like this. And then I added some chorus from Arturia called Dimension D. And then a little bit of a short delay with some significant feedback here. And then I added this Mellowfy plugin kind of uh, adding some distortion and some pitch modulation. There's actually a lot of Macs for Live devices that I haven't had a chance to use, and so I just was throwing some random stuff on. I found this thing called Comer, which ostensibly adds some comb filtering into the sound. It sounds super resonant now and kind of interesting. And then of course I resampled it into this singular sound. And now here's the fun part because I took this sound, dragged it into a sampler, and now I'm gonna play it out on my keyboard once again. 
I'm telling you, you get the coolest results doing this. But if you have some other ideas in mind, like I wanted to make kind of a keys sound, I found out that if you just, if I drag the flag on the sampler of this resampled sound with the effects added and just use this tail end right here, I can get a sound that sounds like this. And those components inside the sound, like especially in the tail, add such an interesting flavor that, you know, I would probably have a hard time coming up with a way to recreate that in the synth like exactly as is. But it's just so easy to do with this resampling. Now, a fun thing to do is to go in a completely different direction too. So if you wanted to make sort of a lead sound and you wanted it to sustain longer, I just took that same thing in a sampler and I turned on loop mode and looped a tiny little section of it. So it started sustaining like this. But then what happens when you change notes on the keyboard? The delays or like the looping gets a little bit more noticeable and so you can kind of play around with that quality of the sound. Kind of cool. Normally when I'm doing the resampling process, I like to start by making a sound that's similar to the source. So in this case, it was a bell, but then I like to do the complete opposite. So what I imagine the opposite of a bell sound is, is like a bass sound or an 808. And funny enough, I was able to make one with just one tiny part of this olive oil tink sound that I'm recorded in. So I'm playing a super low note and then I'm just adding a little bit of saturation and just bumping up the lows a little bit and adding some compression and check out what this sounds like. And now we could just resample this and call this an 808. And this is our 808 that we just happen to make randomly. I think at the end of the day, we all just like having fun playing around with sounds. I mean, I know I do, you guys know I do, but if you're feeling like you're in a rut and you just, you need some inspiration, this is a really good strategy to start with the sound design first, make something cool and then that, let that inspire what comes next. And like I said, you can use this as an opportunity to use some of those plugins that you have collecting dust. I know you've got them, I'm guilty of this too. And use those and start learning more about them by just messing around with all the sounds. So we don't always need to rely on our synths, to make sounds for us. We can get something really unique with this resampling process. And if you make something really cool with it, I would love to hear it. Please do share. And until next time, just enjoy yourself. Have fun making sounds or music if they're inspired by the sounds. And we'll see you in the next video. Peace.